It's got to that time, the two week mark after setting out on an ambitious new regime working towards your goals, where your commitment's really being tested and you may be starting to falter. But rather than abandoning your progress so far and letting it all unravel, here's five ways that you can reboot and get your progress back on track. But first, let's talk a bit about goal setting. So chances are when you set your goal, you made it really specific rather than vague and it had some personal connection as to why you wanted to achieve that goal. And then to build your action plan, you probably broke that goal down into several more intermediate steps. And then once you had all of those worked out, you probably then decided a daily step that you could take to work towards those different goals. So there's this interplay of the long term, the short term and the daily when working towards a goal. And the expectation is that your journey towards that goal will look something like this. But this is very much the long term version. But if we zoom in and look at a daily time frame, what you're really doing is an iterative loop. And if you aren't closing that loop, then it is entirely within your power to change and adapt and make that loop more closable for you. So let's go through five ways that you can adapt that loop and get back on track with your progress towards your goals. And let's start with focus. How many goals are you currently focusing on right now? At the start of the year, when we're making these commitments to change, we can overcommit. Taking on too many things at once is a challenge. And when it comes to goals, you might not be seeing progress because you're flitting between several different ones and actually forgetting to take action on several of those goals. Reflect on your goals, prioritize them, and try focusing on just one. Then as you master that goal and that daily step becomes a habit, you can take on and introduce some of those other goals that you want to work towards. And picking up on that headspace point when you're making a goal, let's talk about flexibility. When it comes to making goals for the new year, there's a real sense of magic and possibility around this new packet of 365 days that you're stepping into. Now add to that the fact that you're coming out of the holidays and celebrations and probably lots of fun. So when you're making those goals, you probably forgot to factor in how your life might vary naturally on the day to day because your average daily experience is probably all over the place. There'll be days when you're absolutely knocking it out of the park and having the best time. There'll be days when you're just going through the motions. And there are also those days when you just wanna curl up on the sofa with a duvet and binge watch a TV show. So rather than having rigid yes, no, did you take that step type mentality, let's build in some flexibility with flexi habits or habit levels. And this gives you a range of possibility for you to still achieve that daily step. So for something like reading, you might have level zero, didn't read, level one, read a page, level two, read a chapter, level three, read more than a chapter. Next up is feedback. If your daily step is an iterative loop, then there's room for us to build in feedback. And feedback is crucial for you to adapt and change and evolve, tweaking until you find something that really does work for you. But to interpret and decide how you want to change the parameters based on your feedback, it's good to have a record. So tracking your daily steps or habits is a good way to get started with this. And your tracking does not need to be fancy. It can be in the back of a notebook, it could be in the notes on your phone, it could be in an Excel sheet, it could even be in a calendar on your fridge but you'll need to be able to look back on and reflect on how much you've been able to achieve in your daily steps towards your goal to actually understand how you might want to adapt and change so that you can be making more daily progress. And habit levels ties in quite nicely into this feedback exercise. Then following on from this feedback loop, let's think about follow through. And often when you wanna make changes, you're introducing something completely new into your behaviors. And I would be remiss not to mention atomic habits when talking about behavior changes and introducing them in a gradual and sustainable way. But I'm gonna focus in on visibility. And this comes down to how you remind yourself to actually start taking that daily step, which will then evolve into a habit. And one of the examples is habit stacking, where you take something that you're already doing like clockwork and use that as the prompt or reminder to get you to start building that new habit. And this is really effective because it means that you aren't solely relying on your ability to remember to take that action. And if you're still finding it hard to introduce that new habit in a habit stack, why not change up the stack and try out a different prompting habit? When you're forming your new habit, do try out and change up the cues or the visibility technique that you're using to try and help you remember. Anything that can help you in addition to your memory is a step in the right direction. And lastly, let's talk about fatigue. It costs you energy to build those new behaviors. So at the start of the day, you're less fatigued, both mentally and physically. And so you're less likely 
need to excuse yourself or justify not following through on a daily step at the beginning of the day versus the end of the day. So could you move your daily step or new habit to the start of the day or just to any time of day where you know that you won't negotiate with yourself and ultimately talk yourself out of taking that action? But if moving your habit to the start of the day isn't an option, then make it easy and reduce the energy that's needed for you to take action on that habit. And this might come down to some trade-offs in the choices that you're making to help you engineer that visibility and save energy so that you actually start to follow through on that habit you're trying to create. So that might be choosing a gym that you walk past every day on your way to work, even if it's more expensive than that gym the other side of town. Or it might be choosing to buy chopped up pre-prepared vegetables that you don't need to peel even though they're more expensive and are packaged in plastic. But if it allows you to lower that energy barrier so that you can actually start to form that habit, then I say you should do it. And then once you've established that habit, over time you can start to rectify those trade-offs. So that's five suggestions for you. I was inspired to give them all a title starting with F, so I'm sorry if some of those were a bit tenuous, but we had focus in on just one goal, be flexible what counts as progress using things like habit levels, collect feedback so that you can course correct and adapt, things like habit trackers are great here, follow through meaning to use techniques like habit stacking and increasing the visibility so that you aren't relying purely on your memory and will actually follow through on completing your daily step and building that habit. And fatigue, whether that's moving those daily steps to the beginning of the day when you're less likely to excuse yourself from completing the action or taking the steps and making choices to make it really easy for you to take action. It's okay to start over and rework and try out your habits in different ways, particularly if that means that in the long run, you'll continue making progress towards your goal rather than stop working on it completely. So I hope that some of these suggestions help you and wish you the best of luck with all of the goals that you want to achieve in 2024. Thank you very much for watching.